Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Now, now you stay down here and make yourself scarce until I call you. Claudia's upstairs, and she hasn't heard us come home. Now, don't say a word. Stay right where you are. I'll be down in a minute. Oh, what a surprise this is going to be for. Claudia! Claudia! You're home! Hooray! I didn't hear you come in. I'll be right down. Don't bother. I'm coming up. Oh, no, no, no. Don't come up. I'm coming down. I'm halfway up already. Well, if you insist, I'm in the baby's room. Well, good evening, Mrs. Norton. Welcome home, Mr. Hello there, son. What's the matter with him? Isn't he talking tonight? Well, he's a little shy tonight. Oh. Now, listen here. You go to sleep, Bobby. I am through with you. Your father's home. Asleep. That's that's all that child knows. Thank goodness. Oh, David, I'm so glad you're home. I was counting minutes. Come on, let's go downstairs. Uh, before we go downstairs, I, I want to talk to you. What about? Can we talk downstairs? And can we talk up here? Well, I'll close the door to the baby's room so he won't hear us. I have no secrets from my son. I'll have but you know. I have. Aren't you going to kiss me hello? No, well, first let me tell you my news. And uh, and you tell me if you still like, uh, feel like having me kiss you hello. Oh, what is the news? You mean I won't like it? I have a feeling that you're going to be surprised. Good or bad? Well, we'll see. Now, don't beat around the news. Come on, tell me. I, um, I brought somebody home with me. Oh, well, what's so terrible about that? Who is it? Well, the point is, it's it's not somebody for the next five minutes. It's uh, somebody for the weekend. Oh, no. No, I thought that's what you'd say. Oh, David, I was so looking forward to this weekend alone together. Well, so was I, but it couldn't be helped. David, I don't care who it is. It could be the King of England, and I wouldn't be interested. Well, it's not the King of England. Oh, honestly. This is going to be such a nice, simple weekend. No fancy meals. I was even thinking of giving Fritz and Bertha the weekend off. Be just like when we got married. Except for the baby, of course. Well, it will be just exactly like when we first got married, except for the baby. No, it's never the same with company. You know, company means, oh, all sorts of things. Still, we uh, we ought to go downstairs and be uh, welcoming. Yeah, I guess so. Is my hair all right? Mm, hair's fine. I'm not dressed very... Fancy. Well, this is unexpected. You're not supposed to be dressed fancy. Say, David, you haven't told me who it is. Well, come on down and see. Well, I don't like surprises that I don't like. Well, I see what you mean, but um, come on down anyway. Now, it's just getting used to the big, empty house Mama left behind. Just us. Oh, well, I suppose I shouldn't complain. Maybe it won't be so bad. David, I wish you'd tell me who it is. You are a baby. You can never wait for anything. All right, just to prove to you how stuffy and grown up and dull I can be, I'm coming down with you without even caring who it is. Good. Darling, I wish you would have called me from New York. We're only having chicken pie for dinner. Leftovers from last night's chicken, vegetables, and things. It really won't make any impression on company. I told you it wasn't the King of England. But still, company does not like to eat leftovers. Oh, David, what a bore. Well, this is what comes of having a house in the country with guest rooms in it. Every silver lining must have its cloud, I suppose. Oh, darling, is my nose shiny? Mm Mm-hmm, a little. Why didn't you say so before? I'm used to it a little shiny. So come on in the living room now and stop fussing on a stiff upper chin now. Now come on and meet the company. Mama. Mama, the company's you. David insisted. Oh, David, I could kill you for not telling. Nice manners you have. He insisted I come. I didn't want to, but he insisted. I wanted to play Santa Claus. So, darling, now, what do you say? Still, uh, still hate company? Well? Oh, please, Mrs. Brown, now, please sit down. I'm very sorry I was busy when you arrived. Quite all right, uh, thank you, Mrs. Norton. I will sit down. My husband says that he... Met you in New York? Well, to be honest with you, your husband called me and invited me up to your house for the weekend. Well, we're delighted you could come and that you didn't have any previous plans. <laughs> well, well, listen to her. It's very good to see you. It's been quite a while, hasn't it? Oh, several weeks mm-hmm, since I, I went so. back to town. Do you enjoy living in the city? It's a welcome change from the rural life. <laughs> house looks nice, Claudia. 
You kept it very well. Thank you. I noticed you had the window curtains washed. Well, I have excellent health. The same couple as when you were here last, you know. How fortunate you are. Oh, I am, very. Are very. you two girls going on talking like this all evening? What do you mean, David? I don't know what you mean. Mrs. Brown is here as company. I'm certainly not going to treat her with my ordinary, everyday manner. I'm going to use my best company manner. Well, I'm not sure that I can stand the atmosphere. It's kind of stuffy. After all, David, she had her chance to live here with us, just as family. She refused. She decided she would rather live in New York. So now, when she visits us, she's company. That's... All she is, company. And exactly the way I want it. You see? Well, I'll be a... If I may say so, Mrs. Brown, you're looking very well. I believe living in the city rather agrees with you. I have more privacy. Don't you miss living with other people? I can't say that I do. No, a little privacy and independence is pleasant. Well, you're old enough to know what you want. Well, how's the baby? Is he well? Is he taking his food? And Baby's he's fine. He's asleep now. We will be very happy to show him to you a little later, when he wakes up. Oh, I see. Well, I can wait if he can. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I guess I ought to go out in the kitchen and tell Bertha to put on the good linen napkins. Linen napkins? What nonsense are you talking to? David, you agree with me, don't you? Oh, of course. I mean, course, when we're having David. company, we certainly don't serve just plain old paper napkins with dinner, no, no, do we? No, no, no. Don't we have lace? And I think we ought to use our good silver and our good dishes, mm -hmm, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And we'll tell Bertha to open up a new can of that good gravy. Oh, yes. Claudia, if you're going to go to that kind of silly trouble, I'm going to turn right around and go right back to New York. Well, there isn't another train till 10 o'clock, and that's too late for a woman alone. Nope, you'll just have to eat with the good linen, good silver, I'm sorry. And uh, the good gravy. And that. like it. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of such a business. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll... Go speak to the cook. Yes, you go I'll be speak right to the back. cook. Don't All go right. away. We won't. Oh, David, you might hang up Mrs. Brown's coat and hat. The butler is out milking the cow and feeding the sow. Oh, no, let her sleep oh, in them. What a child. Not such a child. She never for a moment suspected that it was you downstairs. Maybe she didn't want to suspect, David. Nonsense. She is so excited to see you that she isn't even letting herself go. In that case, David, was I right to come back, even if only for a weekend? Of course you were. Why shouldn't you? Just because you're not living with us doesn't mean that you have to be a, a complete stranger. No, but I don't want to make it difficult. Claudia seemed to be getting on so well by herself. No, well, once a baby has been weaned, Mrs. Brown, it, it can taste milk again. Don't be afraid for Claudia. If she'd married any other man, I might be. Yeah, and if she had any other mother, I might not have married her. Such talk. If you have confidence in her, David... I shall give nothing a second thought. And I have confidence in her. I could cheerfully wring her neck at times, but this weekend is a dividend that, that you both have earned. Who has what coming to whom? Oh, still eavesdropping. Nothing has changed since I've been gone. Lots has changed. Maybe it's not very noticeable, but a lot has changed. Good. I'm glad. Well, what did Bertha say when you told her who her company was? She said, ach, no. Ach, no. She hoped we had enough food in the house. No. I'm not a very big eater. Well, still, an extra mouth is an extra mouth, you know, and, of course, you were unexpected. It's a good thing I know Bertha, so I'm not interested in what you say. That woman always has enough for six people when she's cooking for two. <laughs> yes, there's something very ample about Bertha and her cooking. Oh, please take off your hat, Miss Brown. Stay a while. I might. Now, do try to make yourself at home. Not very fancy, but it's the best we have. I'm very adaptable. Oh, and I must remember to have the bed and the guest room made up. Am I not to have my old room? Your old room? What do you mean? The one facing the birch tree, my room. Well, you oh. can have the birch tree, Mama. <laughs> that room. You mean the one with the trellis wallpaper? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm very sorry, Mrs. Brown, but that is Mama's room. That's where she stayed when she stayed here. What in the world are you talking but about? But the... Guest room is lovely. Oh, it's charming. That's where we put our company and our very special visitors. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable oh, there. Oh, yes, you'll be quite well, comfortable Well, if it's there. good enough for your other company, it's good enough for me. She modest, David. Beats anything I ever saw. Must remember to put out the good guest towel. Yes, I'm starting to feel very, very welcome here. I'm as glad. if my coming hasn't upset anything. Are you sure that you don't have any special plans for the weekend, Claudia, and that you wouldn't like me to go home? Oh, no. Oh, we're delighted to have you. Why, you're not inconveniencing us a bit, is she, David? Mm, no, not much. You'd tell me if I were. Of course. We make no bones. You have changed the room around a little, haven't you? 
I think I prefer the coffee table where it was, between the big chair and the sofa. Oh, really? Mm. David, you hear that? She's criticizing the furniture arrangement already. Well, that's to be expected. Of course. Not everybody that uh, one brings home has the best manners. She just behaves as if you're a member of the family. Mm-hmm. I wonder where she got the idea. I can't imagine. And stop whispering. Some women are... Well, I don't like to use the word, but I think it's forward. Mm-hmm. You uh, know what they say about New York women. Oh, that. Yes. yes, I've heard that. If you two don't mind. Oh, what? What? I think I shall go upstairs and visit with my grandson. Listen to her. It's her grandson already. And has been for quite a while now, thank you. Asleep or not, I know he'll be happy to see me. He'll even make me feel wanted, instead of as if I'd forced my way into your house against your hmm. will. Hey, watch out the stairs, Mama. I don't think the hall light's on. I know where it is. I'll turn it off. Be careful. They're steep. And Mama? What is it? Nothing. Except I'll be up in a minute. We'll get your room ready. <laughs> well, darling, you surprised? Oh, yes, David. Big surprised. Say, how does Mama look to you? She looks a little tired to me. Oh, she looks fine. Well, what she needs is some good home cooking in her stomach. I mean, she hardly eats when she's alone. It's so alone eating. Now, look here. I didn't bring Mom up here so you'd worry about her. I can't help it. It's so good having her here. Well, that's certainly not the impression you gave. Oh, that. That's just Mama and me. Goodbyes and hellos. They're really almost the same thing, aren't they? You've learned a lot. Well, we're not going to have our weekend alone together. David, darling, you're so good to me. Well, I love you, you little fool. Mama? I love Mama first. So did I. So we're even. Do you know something? What something? Now I think I love you most. But in a different way. And it's the different way that counts. Now come on. Come on. Let's help our company unpack. When you're at the market gathering your dozen and one household needs, you'll probably find a Coca-Cola cooler installed there so that you may shop refreshed. As you enjoy a bottle of sparkling ice cold Coke, Remember to pick up a carton for the family, for they like to work refreshed and play refreshed, too. Say, Joe, I guess that really surprised Claudia, didn't it? Well, David, I think Claudia had given up thinking that Mama would ever come. Mm, Well, it's the whole family together again now. Hope you have a good weekend weather. Ah, Claudia won't even notice. As a matter of fact, it's during the week that I hope she has good weather. Yes, I guess it's the long weekdays when you and Mama are in town that a little sunshine helps most. And uh, if you don't mind my acting the weatherman, David... Now, don't tell me that that's another one of your talents, Joe. Oh, yes, yes. I'm a very talented fellow. Here's a tip. All right. Monday, you'll have a thaw. Monday, we'll have a thaw. Touch of spring in the air. Oh, spring in the air. Just as a general reminder eh, that there is such a thing as spring. Well, thanks for the tip, Joe. I'll be seeing you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, David. Every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.